So I've been using Notion for a pretty long time now. And there are a few things that have always irritated me, especially when I'm writing formulae. You know that feeling when something should be really simple, but it just isn't. So it was already bad with formulae. But when they added automation with formulae, it just got worse. But you know what? Notion finally fixed it this week. And I've been playing around with the updates and I found a sneaky little hack inside of automations. So if you use formulae or automations, you're gonna love this video. So let's talk a little bit about this formula editor and what's changed. Now this old one was pretty tiny, a fixed box. So if your formula was even slightly longer, you had two choices. Use these arrow keys, just like it's some 2003 software, or practice aiming with your mouse to click that exact point you wanted. That was awful. The font is really small. That cursor sometimes lands in the wrong place. And at the bottom, it shows you the result. And if something is broken, it threw up this vague error with coordinates. And now here's what's changed. The new formula editor is scrollable. Ah, you get a proper scroll bar on the right and it works great with your mouse or your trackpad. You can also stretch this editor to up to 17 lines. Just pull down this little handle. The results panel has just got a little bit of a cleanup as well. Some housekeeping. It tells you that the formula is valid. And now there's this eye icon. Click it and you'll get more information about the result. That said, the wig coordinate style error is still around. And it still doesn't tell you which part of your formula is being referred to. Come on, it's 2025. This is where AI could shine. Just show me what's broken and suggest what to fix. And now the same updated editor also shows up inside of Notion Automations. But they've also done a few clever things there. And not to forget, there's that one neat little hack I found that could save you a lot of time. So to show you this properly, I've set up a quick example using two databases, one for tasks and one for projects. In this tasks database, there's this select property. I can choose a project name. And there's also this relation property that connects each of these tasks to a project. Now this is where it gets really interesting. I've created this automation called populate project. So the idea is simple. When I select the project name using the select property, this automation automatically links that task to the right project using the relation. And if I change the selection later, it updates the relation and relinks it to the correct project again. Now let's say you already have a few projects set up from project A to project D, let's say. Now project A and project B are ongoing and C and D, let's say, haven't started yet. To explain what's happening, let me open up the automation I created. Like every Notion automation, it has this trigger and an action. And in this case, the trigger kicks in when the select property called project is edited. The action is simple. It sets the relation property to the correct value. And let me show you how that's configured. So first you define a new action. So choose edit property. Then you pick the relation property, which in this case is test projects. Then from that list, you select all the projects, project A, B, C, and D. And now you hit done. All right, now let's get into the actual formula setup inside of the automation. So first I click on these three dots and select edit. Then you click on this custom formula. This is where it gets different. So what you'll notice is all the four relations are listed as projects inside of these square brackets. Now that square bracket is basically an array. Now to work with that array, we need to attach it to a variable. And that's why we'll need to use a formula called let's. Now in this case, we are assigning the variable called p to this array. Now we'll have to match the array. So we want the automation to say that if the project name is project A in the select property, then the corresponding relation to project A will be mapped. If it's project B in the select property, project B will be mapped and so on. So we need to use something like an ifs formula to stack up those conditions. To access the select property from the trigger, we'll use something called trigger and project. Now earlier this whole setup had a big limitation. You couldn't just copy a row with trigger.page formula into another line. It would break. The formula would turn into some junk, but now you can copy it clearly. Uh, this changes everything guys. It saves you a lot of time. So in this example, I've set up an array with all the four projects, project A through project D. But for now, I only have defined two conditions, one for project A and one for project B. 
just to illustrate what I'm talking about. Let's take a minute to understand what we need to do. Now we use this formula called slice and that pulls out the project relation from the array. Otherwise we can't pull this out of the specific project relation. So this slice formula pulls out specific items from the array by using the start and the end coordinates. So here's how it works. Project A is the first one. So the coordinates are 0, 1. Project B, the second one, so it's 1, 2. Project C is 2, 3. And project D is 3, 4. Now the if condition already exists for project A and project B. Let's replicate this for project C and project D. Then all we need to do is change these coordinates based on their positions in the array. Just one thing to remember, end of each line has this comma, except for the last one. And that's how Notion knows that that list is complete, the if condition. As soon as you remove the final comma, you'll see the valid syntax appear at the bottom. Now that's your green light. So now you can hit save and done. This setup really works great as long as you have this array at the top that's fully defined. So you'll ask me, what happens if you add this new project later? You don't really want to rewrite that entire formula from scratch every single time. So that's where this giant hack that I mentioned earlier comes in. So let's say we're adding a new project. Let's call it project E. Now here's what you do. First, what we'll do is we'll duplicate the automation that we just built. Let's rename it to something like example or test. Anything that will make it look different from the original automation. Now the trigger stays the same, no changes there. But let's delete this action. Now let's go back and create this new action. Now pick the relation property just like before. And this time select all the projects from project A to project E. I click on the custom formula. So now you can see that Notion has automatically built this new array. This time it includes project E. Let's copy this entire array or string to your clipboard. Go back to your original automation, open the action, and look for this line where the variable P was defined. So delete the old array and replace it with the new one. And just like what we did before, add this new line for project E. The trigger page, and the slice coordinates need to be changed as well. Save it, and now you're good to go. You can delete the temporary automation that you just created. It's especially helpful when you're dealing with long lists. If you want to learn another fantastic formula hack, watch this video next.